All right, one last mini lecture, and now we'll move from medicine to evolution. As weird as it sounds, it seems like the original ATP synthase might have been a flagellum. Why am I saying that? Well, actually, if you look at bacteria, they have a respiratory chain that looks a lot like uh, mitochondria, and some of them, I believe, are more complex, just like our four complexes. But of course, some bacteria are simpler. And this isn't just a short-circuiting kind of thing that you see in plants. This is just a two-component, uh, two-complex electron transport chain that um, takes from NADH, and it has like a complex one, and the complex one doesn't even pump protons, it just produces Q. But the Q goes to a complex four version that crosses the membrane, is able to pump protons, and is able to uh, pass the electrons to oxygen. So you see how this is slightly more complex than the flower version, just because you have a complex four that can actually do its job. It can actually pump protons. Not terribly efficient, but it works. It's kind of like the compact car version. Like my first car was like this, and now I have a minivan, so now I have a bigger car. I'm not sure it's an upgrade, but the minivan is like the four component complexes, and this is like the compact car version of that. But what's interesting is what the bacteria can sometimes use the proton motive force for, because if they have these two complexes, they basically turn electrons into a proton gradient, and then you can use that to catalyze rotation. Well, the rotation doesn't have to make ATP. In fact, sometimes the rotation can just be rotation. Here's an example of how bacterium can use that rotation to literally rotate a flagellum. And a lot of the rotary motors that you find in bacteria look an awful lot like ATP synthase. They look exactly like that little tumble tower. I actually have it right up there, but you all remember it. I've shown it in class two days in a row, so you can't get away from it. Um, this actually makes a lot of sense because it's like, well, couldn't the rotation have developed for the simple act of making something big rotate, the flagellum rotate, and then it was adapted later to be a very efficient way to make ATP? There's still a lot of steps missing in that, but it does actually make a kind of sense, right? So I want you to realize that flagella are rotational catalysis that draw from protons. And here's a picture by Goodsell, my favorite protein artist. There aren't many protein artists, but he's my favorite. And uh, it shows that the, the flagellum is shown in green, and you see how it looks like the F0 component, right? It's just got a big old flagellum attached to it, kind of like they attached that actin uh, fiber to it in that one experiment. Um, and just notice how crowded the cell is. You might be able to recognize some other components that David Goodsell is doing in their color. For example, the cell wall is green. And the inside of the cell, you have um, all sorts of fibers that are uh, orange and red. It's kind of a cool exercise for review to be able to do this. But the one thing you should see is, oh, flagellum. Kind of looks like F0, or FO, not F0, right? And what's really interesting is all flagella sort of look like this, and they have a variation within them where they look like a bunch of different versions of F0, FO. I keep saying that. So here's E. coli, C. jejuni, uh, you know, T. primitia. These are six different flagella, and you can see that they all are slight variations on each other. This is important because some people like to look at the flagellum and they are wonderstruck with it, which is a good response. But then they say, there's no way this could have evolved. It's a case of irreducible complexity is what they say. And I argue against this. I argue against it specifically in my book. Um, and so there's a chapter about this. It shows up in several chapters. But one of the pieces of evidence that convinced me that this could have evolved is there's slightly different versions in these different bacteria. So we know it has this flexibility in its irreducible complexity. Well, it's reducible to this kind of variation. And this kind of variation doesn't seem that far from the variation that includes an ATP synthase. For just from looking at that, the spectrum of flagella is similar. You know, you can argue with this, but there's a lot of diversity within just flagellum. It's not like you have this optimized controlled motor. And you look at it. This is it right here. I'm not hiding anything back. The more you look, the more you can get to the truth. And I believe the truth says that there's a lot of flexibility in how you can build a flagellum, maybe enough flexibility so that you can actually flexibilize a flagellum into making it into an ATP synthase. That's still a leap, but that's a leap that I think will work. Here's the assigned homework. 
Thank you for listening to these extra lectures. We are done with chapter 19, now on to chapter 20.